Hey everyone, today's topic is going to be how the narcissist devalues people. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So, devaluation, what is that? That is when something has lost its value or it is depreciating. Example, you purchase a car. The minute you purchase that car and you drive it off of the dealership, yes, it depreciates in value. I know, strange rule, but it's the way it works for some reason. This is no different than in the narcissistic relationship. You, the individual consuming the content, and again, thank you very much for being here. You were devalued in the relationship and virtually all throughout the relationship. You didn't really know it. You couldn't put your finger on it. Keep in mind, when you met the narcissist, most likely you were in that euphoric stage. You were just over the moon. Everything was all puppies and rainbows, and you thought that you had found your soulmate, the love of your life, or this special individual who just seem to have all the same interests as you. The same goals, dreams, aspirations. They liked the same hobbies. They were just all over you. Remember getting texts 15 times a day with all the cute emojis? Remember how they didn't want to end the phone? Remember how they were checking phone conversations? Remember how they were checking up on you? Everything was bliss. And this was meant to entrap you in the narcissistic cycle. Now, when that happened, and as soon as you said the magic words, I love you, or as soon as you relocated, or as soon as you moved in with them, or whenever you struck up the business with them, whenever you signed on the dotted line, all of these things, or, in, or if you introduce them to your social circle, it's the same thing. Once one of these, and or all of these barriers were broken, in other words, you let them into your world, let's put it that way, then the narcissist now had you. They now knew what made you tick. They now figured out what your hobbies and your interests and your likes and your passions and dreams were in your social circle and probably how much money you made and what you like to do and your past relationships and on and on and on. And this is when they said, okay, I now have this one, which unfortunately was you. This is when they began to devalue you and they do this to virtually everybody. You see, the narcissist believes that they are more important and smarter than you and that they know so much more. And that the world revolves around them. Now you, again, watching the video, you're not like that. You're most likely a kind, loving individual, perhaps even an empath. And why would you devalue another individual? You wouldn't, it's completely foreign to you. Exactly, that's why you are getting the wisdom. But to the narcissist, remember, everything is upside down. It's topsy-turvy, it's inside out. So this is natural for them. It's what they want to do. It's how they've gotten through life to this period of time by devaluing people by blowing up relationships, by people having people doubt themselves, by having people not believe in themselves. This is what the narcissist likes. It's where they thrive. It's their sandbox. And why the narcissist devalues people? First of all, I will tell you number one, is because the narcissist, for a period of time, believed that you were the cure. You were the answer to their solutions, to our, or you were the solution to their problems. Perhaps they were looking for the perfect human being. We now know, we've always known, there's no such thing as a perfect human being. We all make mistakes each and every day, but. The narcissist doesn't seem to make mistakes, do they? Of course not, they don't. That's why when they're called out, and I'm staying on track, but when they're called out or you put a boundary in place, they many times can't tolerate it. You'll experience a rage fit, ghosting, silent treatment. They will just say, let's move on from the past. Let's talk about something else. They'll change the topic, word salad, blame shifting, who knows, but that is the narcissist in a nutshell, in accountability. The, unability to introspect or to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I apologize, I want to improve, etc. Now, devaluation, using the car analogy in the beginning, in the narcissistic relationship, they devalue people and they do it to have people work harder for them. In other words, if you're doubting yourself and you're, you're believing that this other individual is putting you down and you, you hold them in high esteem or high regard, that's where they want you to be. They want you thinking that they know more about you that they are more important and that, in fact, you are making a boatload of mistakes. And believe me, if you made one mistake, the narcissist will never forget it. They will point it out until that relationship ends. That mistake could have been from a year ago, 10 years ago, a lifetime ago. They don't care. Anything that you do wrong, they will rubber stamp it in their brain and they will bring it back up at a later date. And again, remember, they also gaslight you. So they will say things that happened in the past when in fact they did not happen, but they will change your version of reality and to fit into their tiny little Hollywood movie and have you believe that what they said is correct when in fact 
nothing could be further from the truth. You know the truth. You know your reality. Just the narcissist wants you doubting yourself. But devaluation is not a good thing. It's not a good feeling to wake up each and every day, walking around on, on eggshells, waiting for the next pin to drop, the next thing to, to fall apart. Meaning, when you are in the narcissistic relationship and you're being devalued, and it gets to the point this becomes your day-to-day -day routine, it is not a healthy place to be. It's not a stable place to be, but most, most times you don't know where to turn. You just know that behind closed doors, you're being treated very, very poorly. And in the general public or outside in the outside world, you're being treated like everybody else sometimes. Remember, many times the narcissist treats complete strangers better than you. However, at times it seems to improve when you're outside of the house. When you're inside the house, you're getting a boatload, boatload of toxicity and abuse. So the devaluate, devaluating, why the narcissist does this is because they now have seen that you're not who they, that you thought they were or they thought you were. Meaning, yes, you do have flaws. We all have flaws. The narcissist has innumerable flaws, but they'll never point to any of them, not even one of them. That's not what this video is about. It's about why they devalue people. They do it because they can control people this way. They can control the narrative. They can control what you do, with whom you do it, your haircut, the clothes you wear, how you go to work, who you communicate with, who you don't communicate. This is another way also that the narcissist can isolate you. Remember, isolation and silence are two instrumental tools in the narcissistic toolbox. And isolation, prime example there is, let's say you met the narcissist, you fell in love with them, and you relocated, which many of you have done. Where did you move? You didn't, you most likely moved halfway around the globe or a different state or a different location where you did not want to be away from your network, away from your social circle, away from your family and friends. This was to isolate you, again, for a different video. The other thing is when the narcissist devalues you, it keeps you wanting to work for them. It keeps you wanting to make them happy and have them give you praise and have them say, hey, that's great, yeah, that's fantastic. Of course, they're not gonna really do that. Devaluation happens virtually every day when you're in a narcissistic relationship and it gets worse and worse over time. But this is what they do. This is how they thrive. They want you believing in the false narrative of, of themselves. They want you believing in the mask. They don't want you believing in yourself. And that is how the narcissist thrives. So perhaps you were in the relationship and you, let's say you got married as an example, well, you took vows and most likely those vows you believe would be for a lifetime. That's what many people believe in. When the narcissist took the vows, that's not what they thought. They thought, okay, I now have a ring on the finger. I can now begin entering the devaluation stage and I can, make the, I can turn up the abuse on this person because they're going nowhere. We are now bound. Our assets are now locked down. Perhaps we're gonna start a family. Perhaps you already did start a family. Perhaps you moved, just bought a house, started a business. That list goes on and on and on. But devaluation happens all the time in the narcissistic relationship. Keep in mind, when you're in this relationship, there is one person that's benefiting and it's not you. It's the narcissist and they know this. There's no, there was never time for you. There was never appointments to be made when you wanted to go somewhere. Example, if you wanted to have dinner at seven and it was you, you planned this two weeks in advance and it was the night, Friday night at seven, let's say, did you ever make it on time? No, you didn't make it. You were probably there at 8.30. Why? Because you were being devalued because the narcissist didn't put your dinner for that Friday night uh, on, as a priority. As a matter of fact, they devalued that whole thing. The same thing with the clothes you wear or your haircut. Maybe you had long hair. The narcissist said it didn't look good, so you, you cut it short. As soon as you cut it short, they're saying, wait, that's too short. What do you, what do, you do there? Or maybe your hair color was blonde. And they said, uh, blonde's nice, but I, I prefer people with darker hair. You dyed your hair dark and then they're like, uh, yeah, I think blonde's actually better on you. But you can never appease the narcissist, but that's what they want. It's like being on a yo-yo, always going up and down, up and down, or a roller coaster going round and round, in and out. You don't know what you're gonna get, why? Because the narcissist uses moving goalposts. They use uh, illogical mannerisms, meaning they do whatever they want, whenever they want, with whom they want, and they're not inaccountable. I mean, they're inaccountable. They just want people around them to pump up their fragile ego. So when you finally get your first light bulb moment and you realize, wow, something's not right here. I'm being treated very poorly. It's getting worse. This individual is treating other people so much better than me. They're not doing anything for me. They're not picking me up. They're not taking me to work. They're not spending quality time with me. It's all about them, them, them. And actually my health is now taking a hit. I haven't bought new clothes in five years. My social circle is decimated. I've lost family members and friends. I don't even want to go to work anymore. I don't want to get out of bed at times. 
all I want to do is figure out what's going on. This is how the narcissist has you isolated. They want you not believing in yourself. And remember, the weaker you get, the stronger the narcissist gets because they're looking inside their minds and they're saying, wow, this person, which perhaps was you, they now have a lot of physical ailments. Well, I know I won't be taking them to the hospital or helping them out. Uh, I'll act like I care, but I'm gonna go look for a replacement because this one's battery is really low. And yes, I know I did it to them. Maybe not on purpose, but perhaps many times, as you know, I know firsthand that the longer you're in these narcissistic relationships, the more your physical health takes a huge hit on many different levels. And it's interesting how the narcissist's health really doesn't take a hit. Think about it. It's because they're draining the energy out of you and they're putting it in themselves. This will catch up to them in time, believe me, it will. It's just that when you're in these relationships, it, there's a massive energy transfer from you to them. And whether it's positive or negative, whatever you wanna say, they're consuming your energy and they're consuming your resources, your time, your money, your energy, your effort, your looks, your social circle, your status, everything. And this is a fact. It's 100% a fact. There's a spiritual side to the narcissistic relationship that is unlike anything, unless you go through it, you can't put your finger on it and you think this is just something from a movie. It's not, it's real. Point being, why does the narcissist devalue people? Because it's how they make themselves feel good by putting other people down. Basically, they're like the schoolyard bully in third or fourth grade, fifth grade, whatever grade you want. The grade where the, the there's always that one bully on the playground and that person, no one wants to go near them because they could be the next target. Well, that's the narcissist right there, just in an adult body. That's why they surround themselves with people pleasers or yes people or people that don't have the wisdom or people that don't wanna be the next target. But they devalue virtually everybody they come across, whether it's directly, indirectly, whether it's to their face, whether it's whether they're, they're, they're telling secrets about you or other people to other people. This is what they do, they devalue people, they blow up relationships, they blow up futures, they blow up families. And there are many casualties in every narcissistic relationship. You are the priority. You're the one that's consuming the video, but it wasn't just you that took a hit. I can assure you, it was your family, your friends, your network, it was your future. It was everything. And did the narcissist know that this relationship would implode? Absolutely, they did. And I'll tell you why. Because every narcissistic relationship has an expiration date. You didn't know it because you didn't know you were getting involved with the narcissist. They did because this is what they do. They are professional relationship people who decimate every relationship. Not the best English, but they're professionals in decimating relationships is the best way to say that. But guys, understand what I'm, I'm sharing with you. The devaluation stage, it's usually a very long period of time because you are working for the narcissist. You just didn't know it. And you're trying to get back to the happiness, the goodness, the, the bliss. And for a couple days, you may get back there, but then you're gonna have the other 28 days of the month being devalued. Because why? Because the narcissist can't wear the mask any longer because you have now been revealed that you're not the cure, you're not the best thing since sliced bread like they thought you were. And believe me when I tell you, when you enter the devaluation stage, your replacement is right around the corner because the narcissist needs new shiny toys, they need new shiny objects, they need new people that they always believe will be the solution, the person they're looking for. They are on a constant, endless quest for the perfect human being. Of course, they will never find this one because there's no such thing. And they will be let down over and over and over again. And they will continue to blow up and decimate relationships along the way of their wake and destruction. That's what they do. So understand the message, guys. Devaluation, it's not good. You shouldn't be devaluing other people or devaluing other people. And certainly nobody should be devaluing you, but that's what the narcissist does. That's how they thrive. That's how they can just go from person to person, business to business, relationship to relationship, as if they don't care because they flat out don't care. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. Remember, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Continue to move forward each and every day. Continue to invest in yourself. Pay this video forward to someone who can use it. Understand that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. Be the kindest human being you possibly can and know that you are amazing, beautiful, and loved. Remember, no matter where you are, you are not alone. God bless you, I love you, and I will talk to you tomorrow. All right, good night, you guys. Bye.